What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Merry Christmas, Monster Hobbies, Model Car Garage Mechanics, and looking forward to a brand new year in 2023. Maybe some of this economical, financial, world-destroying whatever will finally end, and we can go back to making money, having gas, and eating food. But at any rate, so this Christmas I got a really cool gift. This is the Ravel 1950 Oldsmobile model car kit. And without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we wind the clock all the way back to 1950 as we go to the Oldsmobile showroom and check out this amazing 1950 Oldsmobile Club Coupe. This is a two-in-one kit by Ravel, skill level three in 125th scale for ages 12 and up. And you can either build this as the stock Oldsmobile Club Coupe or the Mexican Pan America car, which is back here with number 52 and the red roses. On this side of the box, we can see the wonderful details such as the Oldsmobile rocket motor and the stock version up here in the green with the stock hubcaps and the front end. And then down here is the Mexican Pan America car in the desert tan color, number 52 with the roses for the decals up the side, the stock wheel without the hubcap as you can see, and then a little shot of what's going on in the interior, possibly a roll bar in here, which is what it looks like. On this side of the box, we actually have the features of the car. It is eight inches long, has 135 pieces, molded in white with water slide decals. It also contains French and English here, so you can read it in multiple languages. Has separate frame and stock car racing interior, rear fender skirts, chrome trim rings, and tampo printed white wall tires. Decals with factory stock markings, Pan American Road Racer and Stock Car Racer. Molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and soft tires. And here we also have all the paint color callouts. Now let's take the lid off our 50 Oldsmobile Club Coupe and see what's in the box. Now the thing is I just took the shrink wrap off this so it might be a little bit tight. Oh, there it goes, which is always good. So we've got a bag of plastic here. This includes our body and a bunch of the other components. There's our tires inside. Looks like some metal pins for axles or something. We'll take a look once we get into the instructions. The glass is also inside here as well. Again, really nice work. Lots of components in this. There's another bag full of white plastic parts, including the wheels and the wheel backs. Then here we have all that wonderful chrome, which is a real hot point back in the 50s. Then we've got a really big decal sheet, which Danny the dog will show you in a little bit, as well as our instructions, which Danny will also go over. Again, this looks really, really great. These are in black and white, unlike the Mobius de or instruction sheets, which are in color. But without further ado, uh, let's hand this over to Danny so he can show us how this all goes together. Hey, everybody. This is Danny the dog, your dog on the street. And today we're going to be looking at the 1950 Olds Club Coupe. Now, here we get a wonderful little three-quarter photograph of the built-up model, as well as the front, rear, and side view as a blueprint style. And right down here we get a write-up on the actual Oldsmobile, which Trevor will put in the comment section down below. Actually, in the description section. You guys can always leave a comment anytime you want. I ain't nothing but a hound dog. Crying all the time. Oh! All right, let's take a look at all the instructions. So right back in 1949, both Cadillac and Oldsmobile brought out their V8 engines, and Oldsmobile had the Rocket 350, which was quite the powerful engine back in the day. Silvervel has made a really wonderful looking mock-up of this engine for our plastic model kit. So here we have the right and left hand side engine block being glued together, and the famous Oldsmobile timing chain and water pump cover with the oil filler cap right up here. And you've got your cylinder heads and valve covers as well as your distributor. There's a little pan back here for the transmission and the bigger oil pan. And as we move down here, we get our intake manifold going on top here, as well as our coil and our right and left hand side exhaust manifolds. The starter motor going back here. And then we've got our generator up here with our fan belt and pulleys and our fan up front. 
Now here we get our oil filter being glued onto the side of the engine block here on this side. And then we also have our carburetor here. And that is a little box for the air cleaner. Now the paper filters will be off the back here. So that whole entire unit drops on top of the intake manifold. There's a decal which will go on the generator here that we'll see later. And then we also have our engine being dropped into our frame here. This has the X member in the middle. And we've also got our upper A arms. Panel 2 shows our coil springs left and right hand sides being glued together to make up one complete coil spring. So you have them for both left and right hand side which goes into these holes. And then the lower A arms with the spindles molded in place and the steering tie rods all drop in place. There's also a front stabilizer bar. And then here's our steering box and a bit of our steering column. And then here we have the drum brake mounting backs being put into place just where the kingpin hole is. Now moving into the rear suspension we have these taller coil springs both again left and right hand side glue them together drop them in these holes on the frame. Now our frame can be dropped onto the actual chassis pan here and we also have our muffler and exhaust system being glued in place. Now here's our differential with these braces and then you get the front and the back and the actual axle here glue all that together and then you add in your drive shaft and that will hook up to the back of your transmission here and then that will drop in place and we also have another anti-sway bar across the back. Panel 3 shows the top part of our X-frame being glued into place over top of the exhaust and everything. And we also have another anti-sway bar gluing back into the rear. Now here we've got our rear backing plates again glued onto the back of our axle. And there's all these little uh, anti-sway bars or whatever being glued up on here on the back of the springs going into the back of the frame. Now panel 4 starts our interior off with our three pedals. We've got clutch, brake, and gas all being glued in place. And then here we drop our firewall into the engine bay. We also have a battery and a bunch of the interior components that have decals. That looks like the windshield washer bottle. And then here we've got our heater motor and our brakes right there, the master cylinder. In the lower part of panel 4 we have this wonderful three-piece radiator with the shroud in the front part of the radiator the back part of the radiator as well as the little filling cap and then here we've got our fan shroud now this is the two-piece air cleaner assembly which goes on the back of the carburetor right down here and then we also have one of the little expansion pots here as well and then our upper radiator hose and our lower radiator hose and that entire assembly glues up to the front Panel 5 starts off our interior on the right track with this two-piece front bench seat. And then we also have these separately molded interior panels, which are always awesome because what they have on door handles instead of just a blob is an actual real GM-style door handle, just like this one here, which is always cool. So then we have our bench seat going in the back for stock. Now if you do want racing, you can replace the back bench seat with this inner steel stamped panel, which would be what it would look like if you pulled the bench seat out in the real car. And then here we have this multi-piece roll bar, and all that will drop into place down here. So if it's only the back seat that pops out, that means you're actually racing with the bench seat. So that's kind of cool. Old, old NASCAR style. Now here's our dashboard, and you can see there's a lot of decals going in on the instrument panels. And a lot of chrome on here, or silver, I, I'm assuming. And then there's our dashboard, and our steering column, steering wheel, and a little horn button, which is molded in clear plastic. And there is a decal on the steering wheel as well, and all that will drop in place. This kind of reminds me of AMT's 1951 Chevy in its construction. Again, another really awesome old kit. Now we get into panel 6. Here we've got our wheel back, and it looks like that little metal pin actually goes in through the hole at this stage. And then we've got our front of the wheel here with all our wheel studs and our beauty ring going into place. And then this is for the rear, same sort of arrangement. Now you do this four times, you pop those wheels into the rubber tires, and then you add on your hubcaps. Now remember the hubcaps are optional if you're doing the race car version, but overall this should look really really good. Panel 7 is showing our glass being glued in place 
once you turn the body upside down, you have the back window and the front windshield and all this other great stuff. And then here we've got sun visors and mirrors and dome lights that all glue into place. And then down here we see our, our uh, wheel fender skirts being glued in. I think that's also optional if you want or not. Then we've got the nice chrome headlamps being glued in place, as well as the clear components. Panel 8, we have the body being glued onto the assembled interior and chassis. And then we've got our hood, and you add in these hood hinges, and they will slot inside like that. Then down here, if I just move this a little bit, let's do a tracking shot. Okay, so here we've got our front grille being glued into the opening here. And then we've got our rear tail lamps with the chrome little fins being glued on the back. The Oldsmobile logo, which is a globe, being glued here. We've got these cool little exhaust tips. These are actually metal, so get out your crazy glue. And then we've got our license plate going on and the rear bumper. And now let's just move this down one more time. And here we've got the body with the rest of the chrome going on. So there's your rocket being glued onto the top of the hood. The old globe again being glued to the front, as well as the license plate down below. There we've got our side mirror, our door handles, and the windshield wipers being glued in place. Once that all is all done, you have your stock Oldsmobile. Now panel 9 shows decal placements for the factory stock streetcar version for 1950. So you've got your Oldsmobile lettering up here, your Rocket 88 decal, the license plates, and then we also have decals for the hubcap centers, which is always nice. Hard to paint some of these little details, you know. And there's also an 88 on the side of the chrome fins. Now down here we've got the American stock car racing version from 1950 to 51 for that season. And here we've got our little decals on the side. These are the sponsors. Look at this old Rocket 88 emblem. That's really cool. And then here we have it on the side. So this could be a car that could race against the uh, Mobius Hudson Hornet, the 1951 Hornet. That would be really cool to have this on a big NASCAR diorama. I'd like to see that. If you build something like that, put it on our Facebook page, please. Now, last but not least, we get the winner of the first running of the Pan American Road Race in May 1950. So this was quite a cool race. If you ever uh, look that up on the internet, it's well worth it. Here we got a Mexican license plate here for 52, or number 52, I guess. And then we've also got our stock Oldsmobile uh, decal there. And uh, something here for the globe emblem. And then if we just move this up a little bit, get Trevor to do that. Let's move that right up there. So here we've got our top view. And it says Gift of Roses up here. And we've got Alaska Auto Wrecking, number 52. And then down here, and Portland Crease Una Rosa Para Un For You A Rose In Portland Grows, it says in English. So there is number 52 with the roses. Mexican Pan American... 2,178 miles stock car race, May 5th to May 11th, 1950. Uh, Suede, uh, sorry, Suedad Jerez El Ocotel, I think is what it says. Hey, I'm not a Spanish dog. I don't even know what breed I am. Anyway, so yeah, this is all how the decals go. So toward the end of the video, I will show you all these decals in color. I can't wait. But now Trevor's going to show you all the cool plastic parts. Thank you very much, Danny. So behold, the amazing Oldsmobile Club Coupe body by Ravel. Now this is really amazing work. Look at the nice detail on here. You also get these wonderful little fender stone guards here with the proper ribs on them, which is really cool. Let's just bring this up. I don't know if you can see that too well, being... Uh, the white plastic doesn't really show much, as we've seen in the past. But take a look, you got the the awesome 50s Oldsmobile headlamps with the air intakes down here. And then look at the hood detail. It's actually got the latch and everything molded in place, which is quite rare on 125th scale models. Usually that's wide open, and there is no detail there. Nice looking chrome trim up on the side and then thicker along here. So this will be great for your bare metal foil. 
There is a bit of a relief in here for that rear bumper with the wrap around, so that's always nice. Now there is a seam line which runs up along here, which will have to be sanded out because the actual trunk line comes down here along the bottom. So just kind of keep that in mind. Nice little tiny holes here for mounting those Oldsmobile tail lamps. Again, really cool work. Now turning this over, you have the ribs molded into the roof panel, which is nice. Sadly, there are two mold marks, one here and one here, which will have to be removed with that number 11 hobby blade. But overall, not bad. A couple more mold marks under here, which can be smoothed out. So again, be aware of where those are. But overall, I do believe the proportions are quite right. I do love that roof line on here. So again, really excellent work by Ravel. Now there are a lot of parts trees in this model kit, but they have been made in small little pieces, or at least cut down to smaller pieces. So here we've got our two-piece air cleaner. We also have those fender skirts and our hood hinges, as well as the Oldsmobile hood. Here's the racing back seat area, which with the seat removed, of course, as well as the roll bar in here. And here we've got our stock interior components. There's the front bench seat and the rear bench seat, as well as the dashboard. So I'm going to push these to the side and bring this one up into our camera here. So again, you can see just the awesome detail on here. Each rib is on that cylinder, as it should be up underneath. Now, there isn't any fireproof matting under here, which is unusual. But there are two big mold marks, which have to be either filled or scraped down with your number 16 hobby blade. Two little holes here to help you with that hood emblem. I see they haven't been drilled through here, so you will have to drill them if you want that in there. I guess this is also used in the custom Oldsmobile, so that's not too bad. I did review that one earlier. It's up here. Anyway... So again, it looks really, really good. Let's take a look at the racing back seat. Now again, you can see all that nice rib detail as well as the wheel arches molded in place here just a little bit. And then you got up there as well as that roll bar, which is a simplistic kind of roll bar. Out the back, you do have some rib bracing in here, which will help. A couple of mold marks, which you can always clean up. And then let's take a look at these seats here. Again, really nice detail. Looks like you could almost sit on them, like they'd be nice and plushy. Again, take a look at on the back seat, just how awesome that is. And over onto our dashboard, you can see the Olds Instrument Cluster with all the little buttons sitting here, as well as the glove box and the heater. And there's the radio up top and the little tiny gauge molded in place. Let's just bring that up so you can see. Again, really awesome. A couple of the handles here for the hood release and whatnot. Parking brake. Again, really, really cool stuff. I'm hoping my friend Justin on what's it, what it's like will eventually do one of these Oldsmobiles because then I can see all the cool colors and everything the way it is and get a better idea of what all these dashboard buttons mean. Our next three parts trees include the door panels in here, our sun visors, our steering wheel, as well as some of these little tiny details, and our front seat back. Here's all our components for our Oldsmobile 303 cubic inch V8 Dynamo, as well as the front suspension component. So now let's just move these off to the side. We'll take a look at the wonderful interior, again stamped as a one piece, much like the AMT 51 Chevy. Uh, pretty much in the same era. So, well, just a year apart. So there's our window cranks in here, as well as that nice detailing. Our armrests here. On the back, we've got our bench seat. That's the rope poles for each seat. You can see it's a 50-50 split in here. There's our steering wheel, and that's where that clear part would glue in. I'm not quite too sure what... Oh, those are the pedals. So we've got our clutch and our brake, as well as our gas pedal. And then here we've got our sun visors. But again, take a look at the nice detail on that interior. It looks like the real thing, only smaller. On the back, we've got mold marks, which you'll have to file away. Some really ghastly ones on the back of the uh, sun visors. So, yeah, I would say that's the one flaw with this. Our really heavy mold... Or... Um, 
Pardon me, mold marks, not mold lines. Okay, looking at the Oldsmobile 303. Now this looks authentic. I actually have an Olds 350, which was bored up from the 303, which uh, is really cool. That was uh, my 1972 Cutlass. I actually researched that when we were looking for parts one day. The Olds 303 parts fit on my car. <laughs> There's the original old style valve covers, which were all ribbed and really nice looking. Now I've seen this done in dark green, but uh, it shows it as a blue on the box. So you'll have to do your research on your Oldsmobile engine block color for 1950. Again, really cool in the back here. Mold marks inside the engine block, but you're never going to see that. Make sure you file this flat, get rid of those mold marks, and just size this up with your own glue and maneuver it into the proper position. So next we've got our A-arms on the lower. Again, really awesome detail and includes the kingpins molded up the side there. Really, really good work from Ravel. So it will be fun to get this thing all pieced together in the end and see what it looks like. Here we have our chassis pan. You can see we've got our spare tire which mounts vertically in here as well as our fuel cell and then the floor and look at all the nice detail in here. Now it does look like there is a name or something across the bottom here. Can't quite read what it says. Let's just... Oh, 1950 Oldsmobile. 88. Used under license. Okay, so it says that right in there. I don't know if you want to dry brush that or just file it off. It's up to you. Now if we turn this over, you can see that the mold marks are being hidden here underneath the bench seat and the rear back. But unfortunately there are some mold marks just in here, just behind the wheel arches. Again, though, really cool underneath the hood. You can see just the great detail on there. Now your A-arms will fit into that square that's there. Overall, really, really nicely done. Although I will say that those mold marks again are the issue, as well as a lot of seams under there, little seam lines. Our next three parts trees include the wheels and the oil pan front timing cover. We also have radiator components and engine block components, cylinder heads here, and our rear axle. So let's bring this up into the camera. One thing I noticed here is really unique, if I start here, is this gigantic serial number that's just stamped in here. Makes me think of some of the milk jugs at work where they have this big massive code which really doesn't mean anything to anybody. But hopefully that'll be painted over. Now we got four mold marks going on back here so that'll have to be sanded down for this radiator to fit in place. Again though, look at that nice firewall. Detail is really crisp on here. There's our, vel our cylinder head, sorry. And then here we've got our radiator with a nice texture in there and the fan and of course our distributor and the starter motor. There's the oil filter. Look at how deep this is eh? and curved right in. Again, really awesome stuff. You can just see how uh, bulbous and curvy the interiors of those Oldsmobiles were back in 50. Now take a look at the nice wheels we get in here. Again, really awesome. Now the fronts actually have these caps on here and the backs don't. So keep that in mind when you're putting this together. There's your front timing cover, the oil filler tube up here. And then we also have our transmission pan and some of those little braces in the back. There's our differential there. Again, looking really, really nice. Now, these holes are not all the way through, so you'll need your drill in order to fix that up. And again, big mold marks, big ones. So get rid of those with that number uh, 16 hobby blade and you should be fine. So moving that off to the side, there's our rear axle. Again, looks really nice. Quite a solid piece in here. I guess it would pivot up at the front somehow and bounce on those giant springs. But overall, again, Looks really excellent. The detail in here is great, but those mold marks, <laughs> they will be quite the challenge. So don't get discouraged by it. Just do your best and clean, clean, clean.
Our next parts tree shows all the suspension components like our coil springs and those backing plates for the brakes as well as our battery in there, differential cover, the top of the X frame, we have our drive shaft and we've got our exhaust in here and some of the engine components for that intake. Again, really nice work on here, but you got to watch those mold marks in the back. Yeah, it could be quite ugly, but look at the nice detail on that side. So that's what you're going to see from behind the front and the rear axle. So again, really excellent, excellent work from Ravel. And here we've got our frame, and it's also got the front splash pan molded in place, as well as all our cross braces and X members, at least the back end of the X member. Now take a look at how nice that detail is. That is really clean and crisp. You've even got the bumper bracket mountings right there. Again, excellent work. You've got to remove these little things off the side. You're going to have a lot of file work, but it does look accurate for a 50 olds frame. And here we have our chrome parts trees. Hooray! Now you can see our rear bumper here with some overriders as well as all these beauty rings for our wheels. There's the Oldsmobile hubcaps and the globe emblems. We also have the side mirror, the rear view mirror, the door handles, the headlights with the little vents in here. You need to paint that flat black inside. Windshield wipers, the tops of the fins, and our front bumper, which unfortunately detached in the bag. But overall, take a look at just how wonderful these are. They're quite simplistic parts. Olds was always quite smooth as far as things went in the front end. Not uh, like kind of chunky looking like Chevy was, but definitely nice and smooth and elegant. Now there are mold marks in the back here. I would paint these flat black so you don't see them up from underneath. There's our license plates have mold marks in them again. But overall, really, really awesome, awesome work. Let's take a look at that grill that popped off real quick. There is the Oldsmobile fish style mouth on here with the nice bent bars. Again, nice, clean, smooth, and subtle. So really excellent work from Ravel on this and will add nicely to your finished model. Now here's some more items that I don't want to take out of the bag because it's the clear parts and I don't want them to get scratched. But here you've got that rear window, you've also got your front curved windshield, and you've also got the side windows and the headlights as well as the clear bottles and the little clear bit for sitting in your steering wheel. Again, the headlights look right. They've got the correct pattern in there, uh, although it's a little bit more subtle than in some other models. But overall, again, looks really nice, looks proper to scale, and should look good in your finished Oldsmobile. Now here we have the tires as well as the axle pins and our metal exhaust pipes in here. Now I'm leaving this in the bag for now because I don't want to lose any of these little teeny components. As you can see the white walls are printed on the tire. Now I did look really hard on here and I do not see any lettering like Goodyear or Firestone or Atlas or any of those things. Now the tread pattern on here is quite nice. I don't know how well you can see this through the bag, but it does look like they, there's just sort of like a tread band that goes around. Again, these will look really, really cool in your model and should go on quite easily. Hey everybody, it's Danny the dog back at you again with our color decal sheet. And I told you this would be worth waiting for, didn't I? Maybe I didn't, I can't remember. Anyway, here we've got our Red City of Roses decal on here. The Alaska Auto Wrecking, which goes on the roof. Number 52 for the roof, 52 for the doors. There's the Mexico plate, number 52, which is all authentic. And then there are Red Roses and the Mexican Pan America decals for the side. And then we've also got there a Rose Grows in Portland for you. Now, getting into this section here, this is all our NASCAR type stuff. So we've got the perfect circle decal on here, champion spark plugs, the airlift springs, Oldsmobile 88 rocket emblems for the hood, the entry in Darlington International Speedway there, number 87 from Griffin Motors. And now getting down here, this is all the parts that are shared universally between the different uh, types because you've got your license plates here, you've got your underhood details and your little emblems. 
as well as the speedometer here and the hubcaps and the old Rocket 88. Now, even though the tires have the white walls printed on them, they do give you these white wall decals, so you could use those on some of your other cars. I'll give you that special permission. So again, I would say that the color registry on here is really excellent. And these decals should go perfectly on your model, whichever way you choose to build it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video of our Ravel 1950 Oldsmobile Club Coupe. Wasn't that a great model with a lot of great features? So until next time, everybody, if you really dig this model kit channel, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the channel with all your friends and family. Give us a like so that that YouTube algorithm can chew it all up and get these videos out. And until next time, everyone, happy model building and happy new year for 2023.